Hello, friends, and welcome back to Me and the Boys Wrestling. I'm James Owen Brown, and I'm joined by my co-host... David the Block Tyrell. We are here today to bring you some fast action and some serious, serious stuff. So, let's recap. We can recap. Last week, we saw Taker win a number one contender's Rumble and then meet Kennedy in the main event of the evening and beat him to beat become him. the new... Me and the boys champion. The Undertaker. The Undertaker, like... Me and the boys champion. Who thought? Like, who'd have thought? Like, I mean, when we started, it was Humble Beginnings. There were only ten characters. Only used those ten characters, and it was a season-long tournament. And then season two, I was like, okay, we, we got to bring in some of these other guys. Mm -hmm. Had an invasion. The yeah. fantasy booking invasion. All right. We held our own, did okay. okay. And some of those characters stuck around. And now we're having fun with some of those and now here we are undertaker and me and the boys champion how does that happen hey anything can happen and me and the boys wrestling it usually does so tonight we have one goal and that's to determine a number one contender who's going to take on the undertaker at eve of challengers yes yes and how are we going to determine who takes on the undertaker at the eve of challengers tournament yes that makes sense and makes perfect sense actually why would we do it any other way? Uh, we could have done a rumble. We could have done, I don't know, a tournament. We've done a lot of rumbles. Yeah, rumbles are, be are good for a chance at a chance at something. Yeah. You know, just show your grit, show your toughness. How many people can you, you know, outlast? That's right. We also saw last week uh, Block take on uh, Chris for the $12,000 title. Right, we need to have gold around our waist. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they were unsuccessful in taking down Chris. Chris Chris has had that belt for a little bit now. He's had it for a few weeks, and that doesn't stop us from wanting it. No, that's true. <laughs> uh, we saw the manifestation of the coronavirus come out and remind everybody that he is, in fact, the uh, quarantine, quarantine league wrestling champion. Yeah. Um, so... What are we going to do about that? Well, on Eve of Challengers, we're going to have uh, an elimination chamber. Okay. For a shot at that belt. Oh, boy. That is tons of steel mm -hmm. main manufactured to create carnage. Now, the other thing we saw that may be even more interesting than the main title because of what we've got coming up, the Sweet 16... Uh, quarantine title tournament is mm. going to go down and last week we saw a preview we saw four of the teams that are in it go head to head mm -hmm. and at the end of it danger boy dana boyle and honky tonk zippe came out on top so to me that's a that's big time momentum that definitely swings the tides in their favor because if you're going against a quarter of the quarter of the brackets then that establishes you above at least that many people, giving you a clear, at least psychological advantage. That's right. So. And uh, the other thing we saw, Johnny Armani continuing to have troubles with Jeff Hardy. I think maybe Jeff might be taken aback by his similarities. Maybe, maybe Jeff is reminded of a young Jeff. Could be. And let's not uh, forget why that backstage scuffle happened was because Johnny Armani was so incredibly uh, dominant versus Donald Trump. I mean, Donald got trumped. He did. It was it, it was not, it was almost a wash, really. Johnny came down all his boys with him and stuff? Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Press play, hit record, <laughs> check them out. Oh, man. But that's going to bring us to this week. We need to find ourselves a number one contender for the Me and the Boys Championship. Now, we've got a lot of, we've got an influx of new talent here at it's, Me and the Boys Wrestling. Honestly, I, forgive me for that. There was just a put out an all call and people were just like, yeah, I got to be a part of that. And I was just like, wait, I didn't expect so many people so soon. Hold on. Yeah. We still got a couple of things to sort out. But they're just like, yeah, no, I want to be a part of it. So Yeah, it was an incredible response. So we, I, I worked diligently to get as many of these characters into the game as I could. Uh, but I was recorded up until a, a certain point. So what that means, basically, is in this tournament, you're not going to see some of these new guys. 
We're going to see guys that have been around, been around the me and the boys block for a little bit because you can't just come in and expect to walk into the number one contenders tournament. No, that just doesn't make sense. And me and the boys wrestling, you got to earn your spot and learn how you're going to do it. That's right. And now I can say that next episode, we are going to put a bit of focus on some of these new guys. So I, not to fret. I heard some murmurs of an uh, 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 old generation versus the new generation. Or the original generation versus the new generation. There were some rumblings. So we have, a, we have an updated group chat now, which mm -hmm. is going to get things going. And it already has. There's already been some talk. That 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 uh, that tournament has mm -hmm. to happen. We have to figure out a way to do that. Yeah, like I'd say Survivor Series eliminate like a Survivor like a Survivor Series structure, right? But then we have to have okay, well, I don't know, maybe what we do is something along the lines of an elimination chamber match to see who is the captain. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we could do the rumblings of letting the captain pick their team. Mm -hmm. All right, and then those who aren't on a team can, depending on who their rivalry is with, either do a tag team or, you know, some other, you yeah. know, some other runnings, some other runnings. Yeah, but, the trick is you can only have eight guys in the ring at one time, so mm -hmm. it'd be four on four, mm -hmm. but you could do multiple four on fours. Yep. You could set up... Um, uh, in the tournament, you would get four matches, so that would take eight guys still. But mm -hmm. you could do two tournaments yep. and have each have an original fight a newbie mm -hmm. for each match all the way. Yeah. But then your final could end up being all newbies, all newbies, or, or all originals, or all originals. So it's it's tricky, but we are going to figure that out. I like yeah. the idea of the elimination chamber yeah. to determine a captain, and maybe we do we we could have that captain actually pick their own team, like in real life. Yeah, yeah, that like, might not be the the worst way to go. The newbies have an elimination chamber, and the the original generation has an elimination chamber, and like we just we go at them, see what's going on. Yeah. Maybe the the can we make it a ladder match or so? So can we make it a ladder match somewhere in there? We probably like there's gonna have to, there's gonna be some singles competitor. So yeah, all sorts you know. of stipulations. So uh, like maybe elimination chamber to figure out the captain, and then a ladder match to figure out the stipulation. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Either way, we're yeah. gonna turn things loose in that group. There's already been some shenanigans. You had an encounter with Honky Tonk Zippe Honest, already. I'm telling you, he, him and his guitar, bro. All I've been hearing <laughs> about is his guitar, and it's just like, all right, bro. Like I don't even know if we could do that, but like, who plays guitar anyway? With all due respect to guitar players, y'all do something that I can't, so I'm not hating, but I am. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he, uh, uh. you, yeah, you talked about his guitar, and he yeah. said he was going to crack you in the skull with it and choke you out with the strings. Yeah, like, the man he, came he, aggressive. He got, <laughs> like I, I get ruthless aggression, bro. It's lucky, uh, like we're talking like virtual stuff, because like he'd have been just grabbed and choked. <laughs> just, <laughs> Ah. <laughs> the beauty of me and the boys wrestling. We go in. Let's get this week's episode started. All right. And um, right off the bat, I'm going to fire it up now, Future James. Future Block. And uh, I'll make sure the volume's not too high, because it always is. It's one of those things. And uh, we're getting a look at Phil Shaw. Yes, yes. Newcomer. Phil Shaw, who has several podcasts on Vigo, very active on that streaming site. Um, check him, check out Mr. Mumbles on Beagle, that's B-I-G-O, King Mumbles, you can check him out. Right now, he seems to be commanding the audience, you know, introducing himself. What's he got to say? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, apparently he's got words. <laughs> But look at Rare Breed interrupting them. He doesn't seem to care about his words. No. Uh, it's universe mode, so it's always that same generic promo. But basically what's happening, Phil's come out and declared his uh, entry into the Sweet 16 tournament, and his partner's going to be Merce Frazier. And Rare Breed said, you know what? I'm going to be in that tournament. Basically, I'll see you there. And uh, let's see what Phil Shaw has to say about that. The belief is strong. Phil Shaw seems to have more words for him. And they seem to be curt. Very curt. 
Oh, fisticuffs. <laughs> fisticuffs. Somebody must have said something that got under Phil Shaw's skin. And he is going to do something about it. Grabbing Rare Breed around the collar. Puts him on the ropes. Oh, no. Michael Cole said it. The suplex off the top ropes. Gut buster. I think that's a fair thing to call it. Yeah. Yeah. It's gut busting. That's yeah. for sure. I don't know if that's a suplex off the top rope. I mean, I guess it... The He's guy went off the top rally. rope, but to me, a suplex off the top. No, then again, that's a superplex. Yeah, 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 that twisting DDT was, was definitely something. The lariat and the zombie refs trying to get Phil Shaw to calm down. Yeah, because this, this was never a match. This was just two guys who don't like each other the got into a situation. The confrontation ended abruptly, but... Yeah. Uh, here we go. We're going into our tournament. Uh... We, we got a couple of feuds. Some of these guys made their way into this tournament and ended up pulling the straw where they're going to fight the guy they're feuding with mm. conveniently. Isn't that something? Crazy how that works out. So we're going to revisit the feud between Brent and the Fiend. Bray Wyatt in an Extreme Rules match. Yeah, all of these are Extreme Rules, and I believe that the damage retention is on as we go through the tournament. So. It's okay. Rules, and the action can leave you speechless for you want to finish your match quick. We don't. We're going to feel it in the next one. Yep. Oh, just a stiff boot to the mush. Okay. Suplex. No love lost between these two. We saw uh, a Royal Rumble situation where they just battled back and forth. We saw a tables match where they just, they foregoed the tables. Neither man was even trying to use the table. They were just trying to hurt each other and the match actually ended in a glitch finish where they just stood up and looked at each other in mutual respect. Oh, well ain't that something. <laughs> yeah, I want to say it was uh, the last episode of season two. It glitched out completely and they just stopped putting each other, it was a table match and they just kept using their finishers to punch each other out. Uh -huh. instead of setting up the table. And then they eventually just turned and looked at each other. Maybe they wanted to see who was the most savage. Coming back with an attack. And that, of course, led to a Survivor Series-style match where we had Team Brent versus Team Fiend. Yep. And uh, Team Brent came out on top there. Launch point. Fiend looking for a weapon. Looks like he's got a and chair in hand. Fiend, vicious as ever. Missing wildly <laughs> and getting a bulldog for his trouble. How did he miss? No idea. Could be because WWE 2K20 is the glitchiest game of the century. Could be. Maybe his mask got, you know, when the mask gets turned. Yeah, a little sideways. <laughs> Maybe he couldn't see. Apparently, oh wow, that was just a disrespectful toss. <laughs> Apparently, he had an issue with um, the burned fiend getup. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was interesting and creative oh, approach, but it was also mortifying. It was very strange. I and mean, then to just give it to Alexa. That's a big spear. Yeah, but he's definitely in the ropes. It's yes, extreme that, rules. Yes, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Brent barely took any damage that round. Yeah. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a big deal going into round two for him. The fiend just didn't show up today, really. <laughs> no, no, no. Brent making short work. Only oh, took a couple minutes. Yeah. Oh, the riding the rope of the bulldog. So we're going to see Brent move on to round two of this tournament. We're going to get a look at the tree coming up so we can see the competitors who are in this. But all familiar faces, all me and the boys veterans. Spear. Short arm. Like, close distance spear. And the pin. That's all she wrote. Yeah. Here is your winner. His nickname is Monzi, but they didn't have Monzi in the in the game, so Montgomery was as close as I could get. Montgomery, that's an interesting name. <laughs> I guess it could have just said Brent, but it feels anticlimactic when they're like, and your winner, Brent. 
<laughs> yeah, kind of, <laughs> kind of losing some of the flair. Yeah, it's not. It's tough. But there he is, standing tall. No slouch here at me and the boys wrestling. It was involved in a, a huge controversy with Honky Tonk Zippe and Roman Reigns at one point. Mm. Coming up next, Danger Boy Dana Boyle is going to take on Shane again here. Uh, another feud that uh, each of these guys were on uh, Team Brent, Team Fiend. I think Shane was Team Fiend. Danger Boy was Team Brent. If I remember correctly. And they have this thing of Shane loads up the green mist, but Danger Boy kicks him in the stomach to hit the, the even flow, and Shane misses with the mist. Mm -hmm. Just... You know, if you had that mist loaded and got kicked in the stomach, the way you would just like, yeah, just the mist down at the ground and then eats an even flow. Mm. We saw that so many times. Well, well, like he had his number. In tournament mode, you're not able to give the guys the three finishers to start the match. Mm. Why not? Why? Well, why can't I do that? Yeah. What's the difference? Yeah. These are some of the things that I hope they fix in the next game, but I feel like nobody's clamoring to... We're not rallying to, like, we want finishers in tournament mode. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's yeah, not... Yeah, no, I don't think enough people are. But after this, they might. Maybe. That's true. They're more concerned with the guy getting stuck in the ropes or getting sucked into the ring. All they have to do is fix the glitches from this one, polish up the stuff, and then, like, do what I'm most companies do and add something to it and give you the same thing repackaged yeah and they'll be able to they save a lot of money because their roster has no been two-thirds of it is fired <laughs> pretty much now if AEW would make a video game they'd be pwned I think there is one coming I would doubt it but like they, they're definitely coming in like the, the WCW world yeah. He's mm. lost some of his win now. Big headbutt. He turn the He's too fighting Extreme on the outside. Leave no room for Straight into the barricades. Danger boy. Just way leg. Just teeing oh, off on the man. Down. Oh, man. Crowd's loving it, standing up in the front row. You remember when there wasn't a crowd? They do. Wrestling was difficult to watch. Oh my gosh. It was bonkers. Like, you could hear them talking to each other in the ring and stuff. It's just like, yeah, what are we hearing right now? And those few, even before no before be they figured out the, the Terror Dome or whatever the hell it was, the Thunder Video Dome, Dome yeah. Thunderdome, yeah. they, uh, like, it, you realized how much a part of the show that that crowd is yep. and how they were like the, like, if you think back to a Shakespeare play, they're really the chorus of the, of the, the, the event. Mm -hmm. of the show yep definitely and now with the, when they started phoning in the audio you can't tell I don't know it just doesn't feel as organic no ooh Shane throwing it into the stairs Dana Boyle taking some of the damage but Shane's body is starting to get some wear yeah one of these guys is going to go on to face a basically a fresh Brent and that's uh it's already a bad scene for both of these guys mm. and getting worse for shame yeah damn danger boy one half of that team that won last week building a lot of momentum going into uh the sweet 16 tournament coming up in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. punch. Oh. oh my god oh, wow. <laughs> He's out wow. the he is not he playing no just haymakers just swing on him like nobody's business. Finishes it with the discus clothesline. And here comes Ivar. <laughs> Ivar going to stick his nose in Danger Boy Dana Boyle's business. And then Glitch Mania runs wild as we get a good shot of the lights. Yep, yep, yep. Seeing the ring is also adding to the potential seizure effect. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Here we go. The ramp is definitely if look away if you suffer from epilepsy. Um, we'll tell you when to look back. Not yet. Okay. Dana Boyle I'm really making use of that split screen. Okay, now. Are we about to see it? You can look again. 
<laughs> All right, so Dan of Wall getting thrown into the ring. Well, Shane's got a kendo stick. Where did that come from? Ivar is trying to just crack his spine. Well, Shane oh. taking a break there while Ivar. Mitch and no the driver. Uh, for the what? What is this? Oh, wow. That would have been an upset. Yeah. Shane trying to take the easy way out, having his buddy Ivar the Viking Raider come down. Oh, there he goes, using that kendo stick. Ivar's back in the Ivar's room. back for some reason. What's that red on his face? I couldn't tell you, but he just walked right back out yeah. of the ring. <laughs> Danger Boy steals the kendo stick and whacks Shane with it. Ever so glitchy. Shane sits with his face in the ropes and then gets wow. the even flow DDT. Even flowed, bloodied. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> 2.75. What a match. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a barn burner. Ivar interrupted, but still, Dana Boyle is up. Shane, if he goes on, is going to have quite the task. Yeah. Neither of these guys can have anything left for round two. Oh. Ooh. Those big punches again. Right, See if he finishes right, it right. with the discus clothesline. Oh, he's he does. Oh, referee in poor position. <laughs> oh, wow. Another kick out. Two and a half. Unreal. The intestinal fortitude. Tell you, oh, Danger, Danger Boy, Boy going for the top <laughs> rope for the marbles. Massive elbow off the top rope. And Shane is right back oh, up. There it is. God booted to the gut. Pile driver. Shane tried to mist and missed. <laughs> I have a fan of those guys of statements. <laughs> um, okay, Dana Boy again up with the. Gut wrench suplex. Going back to that kendo stick. Oh, misses. Oh, Kenny cracked the ribs at the shit. Took the kendo stick back. Yep. Major Boy smartly rolls out to the floor, though. Mm -hmm. It's extreme rules, but not false count anywhere. He can't lose if he's outside the ring. Yep. He's in trouble right now. Definitely. Taking another two shots to the back. That first match was a squash. This is a classic. This is definitely shaping up to be the match of the episode. Shade just walking around, licking his wounds. Yeah, he doesn't know what to do. What's going to keep this man down? Oh, and throws him into the post. Okay, again. Oh, Danger Boy falling to the mat. Commentators ready for all kinds of action. But, ooh, oh. went to the post. Post to post. Mm -mm. Back in from the floor. Danger Boy gets his faculties back. Throw Shane back in the ring here. Yeah, help you want to roll to help himself up? Watch to the corner. Right here. Yeah, it looks absolutely out of it, Cole. From corner to corner. Close by Bulldog out of Miz. Ref finally in good position. Another kick out. Wow. Mm -hmm. Crowds on the edge of their seat. Oh, Danger Boy looks like he's setting something up here. Shane will not stay down. He's trying again. Oh. Another that massive even flow. So nice they did it twice. Danger Boy Dana Boyle going to move on to round two to take on Brent. That was that was one of the best matches I've seen here at me and the boys wrestling, if I'm honest. Didn't know which way it was going to go. No, could have gone any way, which yeah. I think is another plus to me and the boys wrestling versus... It kind of, when was the last time you were genuinely surprised in uh, WWE? Mm. And in a good way. I think when I won, the, when I won back my Tough Talks title. <laughs> <laughs> so the last time I was surprised, and this is not in a good way, so I'm not really going to count it. Bianca Belair gets this massive build all the way to the Women's Championship. Yep. 
Becky comes back and squashes her in 30 seconds. And I'm yep. like, oh, that was surprising. Why? Yep. <laughs> yep. It's not a pleasant surprise. That's no. terrible. What are you guys no. doing? And there's your winner, ladies and gentlemen. Danger boy, Dana and Boyle. All, but in the end, Stand they say here's your winner, standing. boy. Danger kind of boy. Oh, okay. But, Raw. like, the announcer just said, match. just said, boy. That was pretty funny. Did he actually just say boy? I'll have to I watch swear, that back. I, I swear he just said boy. He's, he's supposed to say danger boy. Okay. And that was as close as I could get to Dana Boyle. <laughs> okay. Danger and, and boy. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Up next. This is going to be a classic. These two guys, both former champions. And uh, Kennedy took the title from Honky Tonk Zippe. Who lost it to The Undertaker. Yeah, so both of these guys are going to really want to get uh, another shot to get that gold back. Mm-hmm. Honky Tonk Zippe versus Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy. He's literally on that level, yep. All right. Are you going to be able to do this commentary without being biased? This because uh, you've Stunning had a run-in with Honky Tonk Zippe. Honestly, I'm going to try. Uh, <laughs> Zippe with the snap suplex. I mean, he is dressed stylish. I have to give him that. Yeah. But that quick. I mentioned it in the chat room. If uh, if there's things you want to do with your outfit, I, I can try. There's not a crazy amount of options, but this man messaged up in the chat. Is there any way that I can uh, have a honky tonk man outfit? Absolutely, you can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, belly to belly suplex. And we called it a heel turn, and he came out more vicious than ever and ended up uh, with the gold around his waist after a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. That's quite the display of aggression. What was it for? The wardrobe was really good. Kennedy, however, you know what I mean, on the attack. Yeah, Kennedy, no slouch. He right to the midsection. Oh. Setting them up for the... Striking blow. Just unloading. Just just Ooh, blood. Jesus. He's the of that <laughs> right to the chest. Zip, Hockey Talk Zippe out. is not joking with Kennedy right now. I'm actually surprised that Kennedy has a mounted more offense. Yeah, it's true. These guys used to play hockey together. Maybe they still do. I'm not sure. They oh, played hockey their whole lives. All the way well, you gonna need some ice after that. Definitely. Oh. Right to the wow. skull. Big DDT. He's gonna go for a pin. He's got that helmet on. You wanna maybe work the legs. The yeah. <laughs> Kennedy tries to go for a, a punch, but Zippe counters it right into the Falcon Arrow. Or the C-flat. The C-flat. He's going to oh, get him. Wow, he gets him with the C-flat. Wow. Honky Tonk Zippe going to move on to the next round of the tournament. Oh, wow. Can't say I'm surprised. He started with quite the drive. Did we see a bunch of the near falls? <laughs> mm -hmm. Throw them down after a shoulder, cl a shoulder clench. Yeah. He worked the trapezius so much that he thought maybe he could get a pin out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go, though. Honky Tonk Zippe. He wants to have a guitar so bad, I, I have to find a way to make it happen. Yeah, it's got to be Falcon Arrow. And there's that disrespectful pin. There's no respect in that pin whatsoever. Here is your winner, Smooth Operator. The Smooth Operator. <laughs> I gotta change that. I wonder if I can make it say Honky Tonk. I bet it, I bet it will say Honky Tonk. Probably. Can't make it say Zippe, though. That's pretty, pretty uncommon. That would be nice. If you could like record, yeah, record your own voice to it, yeah, and then use that. They're not serious about life. Hire us, we are. Um, Pettit versus Rare Breed to see who challenges Zippe in the next round. 
Pet it with that uh, bizarre move set. Rare breed with the uh, Alistair Black style. Mm. Uh, both of these guys went to Pearson High School together. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've met a few times here along the way at me and the boys wrestling. Mm. Now, Rare Breed has the unique distinction of being the only no cast member, at least from the originals. I don't know about any of uh, your boys in the, the new breed, but Rare Breed actually got between the ropes. He was a, a, a legitimate wrestler. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. I saw his debut maybe I don't know, 10, years ago, eight, eight, nine, 10 years ago. 9, 10 years ago, he debuted against uh, Moondog Buddy. And uh, was dominant that night. So many people came. So many people showed up just for him that they actually moved his match up the card. The, the promoter recognized what was happening and was like, oh man, a lot of people are here to see Rare Breed. <laughs> oh, wow. And moved the match up the card and he ended up uh, losing due to a low blow. Got oh. low blowed and. <coughs> Damn. Yeah. Um, not offhand, do I know if any of the guys have got into the ring, but well, that's pretty dope. Yeah. And uh, Brooke wrestled in high school, like on the school team. Yeah. Like the amateur wrestling, so he's got that amateur background. Mm -hmm. But other than that, no one with any prior experience. Great display of strength with the suplex. Oh, wow. That's cool. Too quick to catch him there. Ooh, what a punch, pump handle. Wow. Face plant. Yeah. That has got wicked moves. Even when he gets out of the ring, like he does it all stylish. He's looking for a weapon. Well, the ring. Oh, he's got a baseball bat. Oh, that's thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Where B just kicked him right in the mouth. Scoop slam. This match slammed him in that bat. Dropping elbow, but it misses. Oh snap! Got dragon screw. See, bonkers. Just thrown <laughs> disrespectfully, and then has the bat taken to his back. Yeah. You're not gonna last too long in that tournament if you take too many of those bat shots. <laughs> now in the sliders on the game and the options, I turned it up so that when you hit someone with a weapon, it's it does as much damage as it can go. Oh, wow! Oh my gosh, that was a devastating move. He needs to tap just to end the match. No, he broke free. Wow. That it's in there, man. He's no slouch. And he's ready for the toga party at any moment. Any moment. I've always wanted to throw one of those. A toga party? Yeah. Definitely. I'm not against it. Maybe Mikey P can hook us up on a deal on togas. Hmm. I was just going to see if I could get some, like, cheap ah, from, from these areas around the place. And get <laughs> Call it a day. But if they actually have someone that makes toga, he might have a guy. I don't know. Hey, that would be dope. <laughs> that would be dope. The sheath could always fall off. So that's true. Who is this yeah. Rare breed, breed bringing it back into the ring. Pet it with a uh, little takedown there. Yeah, Just Rare carrying breed, the opposition put him on his here. Shoulders. Where's he going with this? Sneak oh, eyes. Right to the face. Ooh. We might be close to the end. Ooh. He can't recover from a beating like this. Oh, launch point, power bomb. There's the pin. Can his opponent kick out? Go for a pin. Oh, that was a close call. Wow. Oh. I feel like that was closer than it seemed. Pettit oh, just barely got out of there. Oh, oh, oh wow. Is he done? And he breaks free. Just a little more damage. Every bit of damage you take is going to factor into your next match here. Oh, there it is. Black oh, Mass he kicked his head off. And then he jumped on for the. Oh, wow. No pin. That was about as close as it gets. 2.9. Oh. Taking a minute here. Had it staggered. Rare Breed calling for Ooh, it. Oh, wow. the running knee smash. Bloodied him. 
That's going to do it. You're not uh, going to get up from that. Fair breed with the running knee smash. And here's a look back mm. at some of the action from the previous match. Damn, that was a that was serious. Yeah. Not messing around. Mm -hmm. And he didn't take a whole lot of damage. Not He'll go much. on to face Honky Tonk Zippe in round two. Mm -hmm. That right there, the launch point power bomb. Yeah. I thought it was over then. I feel like the good part about a tournament, if you're uh, watching at home and you're not familiar with the competitors, you can see a guy's outfit or something in round one and be like, oh, it's that guy with the, the Elvis costume. And mm -hmm. He was badass, and now you have somebody you can cheer for next time they come out, so you gain a little bit of familiarity. Mm -hmm. And as the roster grows, it's getting tough to include everybody. Yep. So we're going to have to keep up with those rumbles and stuff just to make sure everybody uh, gets their stream time. Exactly. And we're going to have to start having uh, to cut these guys for financial reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Not to say that, you know, any other entity has done similar things. <laughs> Shaving the roster down. Yeah, I mean, trimming the fat, so to speak. They're not even trimming the fat. They're throwing out good breast meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Here we go. We got... Uh, so James was backstage watching that performance and thought, hey, I don't have a partner yet for the Sweet 16 tournament. I just like the way he appeared in the ring like The Undertaker. <laughs> He's sneaky. He says, hey, you want to be my tag team partner? Now, we've done this before. Bad we've played the game over the years, and the we've used our characters, and we're, we are a Paul tag team called over. Dangerous Take Goods. He, uh, he works with me, with or, or did, when I was in Burlington. And uh, he's a Dangerous Goods specialist. Okay. So uh, our team is called Dangerous Goods. Nice, nice. <laughs> All right, so we got Brent. And Danger Boy against the, each other and Zippe and Rare Breed. Let's see. We're Ooh. into the semifinals. One of these guys is going to move on to the finals. Mm -hmm. and this one's Neither gonna man had gold here yet, I don't think. Ooh, running STO. Look at the power bars. Oh, oh well, my goodness. Dana Boy in a hurting way. Fall away slam. It's not gonna be much left of him. Oh, he kicks out. Man took a severe beating. Shane and Ivar came down. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Oh. Big back body drop. What do you think Ivar's problem is with Danger Boy Dana Boyle? I don't know. Maybe Danger Boy is a little more um, ruthless than he is. He's more of a Viking than Ivar? It could be. It could be. He could be jealous of his beard. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, that could be. That could very well that happens. be. That, happens. that was another change that got requested and made. I hadn't uh, seen Danger Boy Dana Boyle in person in a while and he didn't have a, a beard and then uh, we we did some drinking over FaceTime and this man showed up on the computer screen and it was just beard it was 90% beard all up in the screen and he requested uh, a better beard so I gave him a better beard he deserves a better beard <laughs> that's gonna do it here we can talk all we want about that but he went through a hellish battle with Shane and Brent squashed the fiend so I didn't really expect this match to go any different and again though Brent saving that saving that power for the finals yep always on top of his game I don't know what that's called either. Some kind of a leg, leg drop, like a standing leg drop. Um, something, something like that. Three. And there's the three. 
Montgomery. Nice win. You've got to be happy with that performance. He actually and owns you know that there shirt. Guys in the back right now hoping they never have to cross paths with this guy. Yeah. Boy, we did a, a show one night. It was a luau, and he Not showed up in, a, like in, in that shirt. And somebody asked him, they said, hey, where did you get that shirt? And he went, looked at her deadpan and went, the 90s. <laughs> That's great. Oh, man. So we've got one half of our final set. Brent's going to take on either Honky Tonk Zippe or Rare Breed. Let's see who it is. Now, I can't remember the power meters. I feel like they're probably going to be about the same. They both had a hard match. Mm -hmm. I think Zippe has a higher power meter than Rare Breed, if I'm not mistaken. But we're about to find out. And remember the rules in the matchup. Pretty much there are no rules. Anything goes, and you can pin your oh, yeah, opponent. Right. Zippe's still in the green. Oh, wow. You're not going to stay green long taking those brain busters like that. Yeah. You can do it in the concession stands. Back in the locker room. You can do it anywhere. Listen to Michael Cole. He's excited. He's all the way in. Zip again, stomped by a rare breed. Oh, knee right to the Ooh, face. Oh, spinning knee. And just like that, their powers oh, are this. level. Yeah. Spinning arm breaker. Rare breed working the arm. Mm -hmm. That strumming here. arm. Real quick and going for a guys. weapon. There are no disqualifications yep. and no like count outs in this one. Got <laughs> a ladder. There are enough weapons under the ring. Well, you Jake's know, I mean the boys the wrestling, there is a chance for upward mobility, so nice. fighting breaker, for a chance uh, at the becoming the number one contender to yes, take on the Undertaker at Evil Challengers. Oh, we got you know them oh. willing to take serious risks, the elbows to the snow caps. That's a vicious really move. It is not it friendly. Zippe with a couple of stomps and then just looking down at the man. Hmm, <laughs> let's stomp him again. Why he's grabbing his face when he's stomping so his precise. gut, I don't know. But hey. 2K20. As Corey mentioned, there's a Zippe, treasure they, trove of weapons under the out. Zippe with the ladder now setting it up in the corner. Oh, snap. Elbows, a rare breed with the chops. Wrestles him down with the arm bar. Fugu, 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 and he escapes fugu, this submission. Fugu. And good thing, that would have been disastrous. One of those arm bars that really hurt. <laughs> 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 oh, man. The one that Tim, um, Timothy Thatcher uses. Not where you want to be at this point in the match, guys. Oh, the amount of times they've teased somebody getting Irish whipped into that ladder oh, in the corner is hilarious. So yep. Here Set we go again. Up. Oh, neck breaker. Come on, let's go. Oh. Wow. What is it with the big DDT? Wow, that's going to do it. Wow, that did it. Massive DDT. Corey Graves called it, eh? And here's a four. It's over. <laughs> oh, wow. Neckbreaker. Throwing caution to the wind. Zippe lands right on that ladder. Yeah. That snap DDT. Zippe versus Brent. That's our finals. One of those men going to take on The Undertaker at Eve of Challengers. And let's not forget, too, we've got DMP with that money in the bank. Yes. That's an Taken from Donald right Trump. These guys uh, look a week like a couple or two of ago. bosses going at it out there. Great match. Social media has been buzzing over this raw Smooth operator, Honky Tonk Zippe, moving on to the finals to take on Brent. Ooh, and that's what it's all about here tonight. Finding that number one contender for Eve of Challengers, for the main event of Eve of Challengers. To take on The Undertaker for the Me and the Boys title. Brent versus Zippe. Who will be victorious? 
Just okay. Danger Boy Dana Boyle's got something to say. Danger Boy Dana Boyle standing in the ring, announcing probably that he and Zippe will be in that quarantine titles tournament, but we already knew that. But make it official, you know? Yeah. Well, really, let everybody know that you're okay after that beating that he took from Shane. And it <laughs> was a merciless beating at that. And then just getting disposed of by Brent Easy. Mm. Mm -mm. Brent's a beast. Always near the he was always near the top of the points in season go, one in the big Extreme tournament. Always in the mix. Nice feud with the fiend. Okay. Ra ra raveled up in controversy over the the, the cash in that didn't work out. Mm. Okay. We had a situation, I think we talked about it before, where Roman was the champion taking on Zippe. Zippe got Roman counted out to win the match, and then Brent cashed in his money in the bank, but the computer set it up so that he was fighting Zippe because Zippe won the match. But Zippe was never the champion. Roman was the champion. Oh wow, glitch factor 11. Yeah, so the following week we did what any good uh, general manager would do, set up a triple threat between all three, yep. and uh, that's when Honky Tonk Zippe won his, his title. Okay. And uh, Brent's been on fire ever since. Mm -hmm. Gut punch. Gut punch. But yeah, what a glitch to have happen. That was probably the worst one. Or at least the most impactful one. Best press and the thump for the thump. Where is my money? Over a pin. Power bars are almost even here. Zippe's managed to fight his way kind of back in. Brent getting really lucky in the, uh, the first two rounds. Mm -hmm. Oh. Big turn work, so. The referee is always one second behind. He is terrible. And again, he's a zombie, so. Mm -hmm. oh, he's holding back his potential. Mm -hmm. oh, wow, Zippe with that big snap DDT. Yeah. Flips him over. Shoot the half. That was two and seven eighths. <laughs> but, oh, oh, the spear! The lack of rules exposed him to some real punishment. He just powered out there. He's close too. These guys just trading big moves here. Power moves. Both men with a finisher stored up. Boy. Uh oh. There goes Brad with the choke slap. That's going to do it. There it is. Brent. Is the number one contender for the Me and the Boys Championship and will face The Undertaker at the eve of Challengers. Now, what's a neat distinction here for Brent is that he's already entered into the quarantine Sweet 16 tournament with Cody Harris, and now he's just earned himself a shot at the number one at the Undertaker for the title that night. He could leave Eve of Challengers with two belts. Brent, two belts. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. A two belt Brent. Yep. Yeah. Two belt Brent. That, that rolls off better. Oh. That, that could be a thing. Congratulations to all the contenders and turning. It was a strong tournament. That uh, Shane versus Danger Boy to me was definitely wow, match of the night. An yeah. And uh, that was fantastic. Even begin to Got to be one of the top Michael. three matches we've seen here at me and the beauty. boys wrestling. Just stole the show for me. Definitely rang true to, to the statement that, you know what I mean? <laughs> Things will happen. Amazing. Things will happen. Amazing. And they can be awesome. That is true. Mm-hmm. Brent taking him in to celebrate with the crowd. Yep. 
crowd loves it. There we see the bracket. All the goings on tonight. We'll speed it ahead here. We see who Brent uh, Brent defeated on his way to becoming the number one contender. Mm -hmm. All matches won by pinfall. Oh. What's this here? We got a little, going on here? a little promo shot here of okay. some of these new uh, new faces. Okay, okay. Just a little preview for next week. We're going to see all these characters in action next week on a, uh, a newcomers, a newcomers only edition of Me and the Boys Wrestling. Oh, man, this is going to be intense. I'm going to close this, come back to us so that we can tell you friends thank you so much for watching with us on this episode of me and the boys wrestling season three episode four episode four all right and it has been a wild ride we've had some matches that definitely set the precedent for this tournament and you know what i mean showed you that we have some challengers that are willing to go the extra mile we're building to that eve of challengers, yes. and it's going to be special. Tune in every week to see how these cards develop and who's brawling whom. Uh, tell everyone your uh, your contacts, where they can find you. You can find me at sharetheshock.ca. That is my website. All the links are at the bottom of the page. I'm also on linktr.ee forward slash expose the north. That's linktree forward slash expose the north. I have links on there to the podcasts that we do, including Tough Talks, Candid Conversations, The Terrell Effect, and more. Also, check out me and the boys wrestling on Thursdays every week for the new episode. And just know that we have some serious things in the works. Absolutely, we do. I have, uh, I have one more surprise for you. All right, all right. I'm going to, I just got to find it here. All Good right. Call. All right, here we go. This is the first promo for Eve of Challengers. We're going to watch it together. All right, let's see this. As our WWE superstars are jockeying for position, going into the upcoming pay-per-view event, we welcome you tonight to...
much pride he has in what he does. I understand the importance of having pride in what you do, but sometimes I think he can be a bit overbearing. I don't know if he means to be, but that's definitely how he comes across at times. Wow, <laughs> that last scene was so intense, right? Holy, okay. like, how do you not want to? How would you not want to see that match after seeing that? That's how that match starts. That's how the match starts, bro. <laughs> Holy shit! Okay, that is insane. Wow, I don't even know where to start. So I guess since we at the end of this, like, gotta let y'all know. Tune in every week. For some of the madness of which we speak. Oh my goodness. Me and the boy is wrestling. Absolutely. Friends, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it around, all that kind of stuff. Uh, check out some of the other playlists. There's poetry, music, all sorts of things. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Brown is a channel my wife curates. And uh, we do This Happened News and all sorts of fun stuff over there too. So check all of that stuff out. And I think that's it. Yeah. We will see you next week and we'll uh, do a special newcomers episode. Thanks for watching. Cheers.